Okay, guys, right. Um, welcome to the webinar. Um, Simon did a fantastic job there. Uh, I actually get the uh, fun task to in fact actually show you about this uh, technology here. Uh, I've been using it for the uh, last uh, three or four days. Um, really glad to in fact actually see that in the attendance list there that so many people that were recently on the DHSA and DHSP training course have uh, visit, revisited us here today. That's fantastic news. Uh, I can even see that there's a few uh, old friends there. So of course, uh, guys, if you're unfamiliar, my name is Chris Flavell. I take care of the post sales management on this side of things and I take care of the training specialist. So of course, uh, I run the vigorous course. Um, please do um, follow me on LinkedIn, guys. Uh, I will, we do product releases all of the time. I do um, product comparisons, uh, product testing. And then, of course, I do always put my calendar online for the DHSA, DHSP training courses. So, of course, you know, you can be kept up to the loop in uh, artificial intelligence and, of course, obviously knowing the best quality of service. So today I'm going to talk about this product, the actual uh, T-Org uh, bullet camera. Uh, I think this is a complete game changer, guys. Uh, I've been doing this for 17 years now. So in this particular case, uh, I have never seen such a feature-rich IPC device. So of course, the model that I've been dabbling with recently is the uh, 3549, so three series, five megapixels, generation four for AI, and then nine for full color. This camera has it all. So of course, we can in fact actually incorporate the light on the front of the device. We also have full color for ultra low light conditions. And then of course, we can in fact actually use the active terror and detect technology to pe pe keep people away. Just of course, obviously a blast from the past, you know, going back to old dummy cameras, then of course, the whole point of a dummy camera is somebody to keep, get you on site, you notice a big red flashing light, and then of course you leave because obviously somebody thinks that they're looking at you. Well, in this case here, uh, active terror de technology, we just don't want you on site. So of course we can actually do a uh, tripwire or intrusion detection based on human or on vehicle on a device like this, 40 meters away. You know, compared to whenever Katie and I tested, you know, the actual uh, the, the active deterrent five series camera on the side of this building here, we only got to 20 20 meters. So 20 versus the 40. You know, this is a, a amazing feature. So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to show you because you've probably seen my recent videos that of course we actually have the white light from the active deterrent camera. So I'm just going to show you the actual front camera on this one. So when the actual active deterrent on the older model would be activate, then, you know, this is what we have. This would in fact actually have two types of settings constantly on or flicker. And then of course, if I transfer to my new one, and there we go. Take a look at that. Um, in, in this case here, um, you know, it doesn't really do it justice whenever we're already in an illuminated room. However, though, when you see my videos later on, then of course I tested this at like near like 10, 10, 30 or something. The whole area was illuminated red and blue. The whole area was illuminated. And of course, uh, you know, if, if anybody was nearby me at the time, they would be seen, you know, what on earth is that? You know, that was a real concerner. So of course, in this case here, you know, just by actually having these lights here and the powers of that illumination, then of course it makes it very, very obvious that something is going on. And of course, if you've got these flashing at you in a complete pitch black darkness, and of course you see the powers, you're not gonna be sticking around. You know, you're gonna see the lights and then of course you're gonna be on your way. So of course, like even the actual, um, cause like so Simon made, made reference to the low light technology. And of course, let's not forget when it comes down to Starlight, Starlight Plus, full color, then of course, obviously it's, it is a magnification of what you do have. So of course, in this camera here, now we of course, obviously have warm light. So then that way, if it really does get down to a lux level that the camera cannot operate and function at the ability for the best quality of service of the technology, then of course, we can turn on the illumination lights. So what there is, I'll fire those on for you here now. Now these are bright guys, these are proper bright lights. So of course now whenever they, whenever we had this at the actual house, and of course I'll show you my video, is that this lit up everything. The side of the van, the back of the fence, the wall, the reflective uh, license plates, absolutely everything. This is a major power light. So of course if we turn on the pre previous light as well, just for a quick second here. Look at look at the comparison there. You know, you can clearly see this is in fact actually whiting out the webcam here just because obviously it's a halo or pure white, white, white warm light. So, of course, in this one here, maybe not so much. But, you know, this this is also an active deterrent camera, too. But this one is way better. So, of course, between the two devices, then, of course, uh, this particular one, a five series uh, device, uh, active deterrent. This one has a standard video motion detection in the event that you ever needed it. Oh, we can turn off the lights now. And then, of course, whenever it came down to this one, when you go into the actual camera's configuration page, it clearly says video motion detection. And then below that, it says smart motion detection. 
Then, of course, when smart motion detection is activated, then, of course, it's responsible for what video motion detection does. So then, of course, you can clear, clearly go into video motion detection, turn it on, select your features, do your relays, do your send emails, all of that nonsense. But then you can go into smart motion detection and specifically say, select human or vehicle. And then, of course, if there's any one of those two parameters, only then the alarm will fire. And don't forget, guys, this is all front end technology. This is an AI camera. So, of course, you, you don't necessarily have to have an NVRI with artificial intelligence. You could, in fact, actually use your old models like our 4KS2, 4 series, 5 series. It doesn't matter where AI exists in your solution as long as there's an I somewhere. So, of course, front end or back end. In this particular case here, uh, I can't wait to get my hands on one of these. In fact, actually, I might not give this one back. But in this case here, you know, I, in fact, can't wait to get one of these. Then, of course, just to be able to have all of these advanced features. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dip out of you, and then, of course, I'm going to fill up a couple of videos here. And then, of course, you're just going to be able to see the actual powers of this technology uh, straight live in some good demonstrations. So just one second. Give me a minute. Okay. So we'll start off with the light frequency. Okay. So all of these are selectable um, based on how you wish for it to be triggered. You know, that, that one there might, might, might do you harm. This is in the front garden. This is 10 o'clock at night, guys. Right, okay. Now, it doesn't really do it that much justice because, you know, like uh, it's a full color camera, so it can see in the dark better than I can see in the dark. However, though, in this case here, then, of course, I think it's going to replay. Then, of course, all of this, that fence in the background, the car's reflection, you will see all of this. You know, you can see the number plate is illuminated there. In this case here, the whole area was red and blue. Okay. This one's not as good because it's a dark screen and of course in the webcam, but of course uh, you'll see that I'm just walking around. And then of course in the left hand side, a slightly high elevation, you know, that's it, you know, this, this is as bright as anything, guys. You're, nobody is going to be sticking around on the premise to do something that they shouldn't be doing with three or four of these flashing away. No, no chance. And then just a quick comparison there, guys. So, of course, um, just uh, as Simon showed you, however, there was a slightly larger image now. So, of course, like as you can see here, so, of course, that has actually illuminated. And I think on the far left-hand side, yes, you can actually see that these license plates are whiting out. So, of course, obviously, with the high elevation, the powers of the warm light are obviously lighting up the area and more so. Then, of course, you can see in the actual car, there is illumination. And then, of course, clearly here, there is illumination. So, of course, the actual powers of the, the lights, the warm lights on the front of the device are extremely strong. Now, um, the street lights that they replaced in my area uh, do not do it justice at all. In fact, actually, I took a picture of the actual street light and it is barely anything at all. It is just literally a guidance light for somebody to be able to see the footpath to the road. In this case here, if I was to replace this with some of my older regular cameras, like a, a 4431, then of course, obviously, you know, it would go into IR mode and this would be completely grayscale. This will, this is easily clearly identified. That is a white car. It does have a, a red roof. It's green grass. It's green foliage. You can see everything in a full color image. This one here without the warm lights on, then of course, you could in fact actually pass this field of view and still be identified of the clothes that you are wearing. Conventional cameras, they would have, of course, obviously gone back to black and white. And then, of course, we would have never, in fact, actually used the actual technology. So when it comes down to the actual TR camera, guys, then, of course, uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's a complete game changer. Uh, it takes micro SD card technology up to the new 256 gigabit. And then, of course, whenever I was actually testing, you know, there's how a whole H.265 plus and all and all of this increased in confession. I couldn't believe it. So as a five megapixel camera a real game changers, whenever it's going to be eight, you're talking about 4K full color. You know, that's, that's going to change the whole industry. But then, of course, whenever we in fact actually had five megapixels, it was at 4096 on H.264. So that's four megabits per second. I changed it to H.265. 
then of course it did two, uh, two megabits per second. And whenever I changed it to H.264 5 plus, then of course it went down to like 256 kilobits. It was like a 90% saving. You know, how is that even possible? Well, of course, because of that increased level of compression, you know, to get a five megapixel camera that's doing less than 512 megabits per second, it's, it's an absolute game changer. So, of course, uh, very impressed with this, guys. Uh, you will be too. And, of course, of when, when, of course, when we actually have, you know, the two, four, the, the eight megapixels, then, of course, when you take, to take on board this technology, then, of course, you won't get anything else. You, you'll just continue to get this all the way from using artificial intelligence, the active te te technology, and, of course, obviously, the ability to see in um, full color. Okay. So, of course, like the, the days of uh, IR are literally coming soon. I'm nearly going to be over because all of our cameras have the ability to see better in the dark than we do, plain and simple, okay? So what I'm gonna do now, the guys, is gonna deviate to show you now my auto tracking 2.0 technology. Now, of course, uh, also, once again, extremely impressive. I put the actual PTZ on, on top of the actual garage. We did some various speed tests. That was actually quite far, quite fun, you know, driving a residential car around in a busy estate. You know, that was pretty, pretty good. Then, of course, we had um, the kiddies come out. So we had my children. They, of course, obviously were doing uh, various different speed tests and auto tracking. And then, of course, what I'll do is I'll just describe exactly what I see. Um, however, uh, all of them, they are a complete wow factor whenever you see the footage compared to other footage that we have before, and especially whenever it comes down to competitors. So just one second. Okay, so what we do is we just start off with a speed test of a vehicle at 10 miles an hour, 10 miles an hour going past the actual lens at close proximity of only 16 meters, and you will see immediately on how quickly the artificial intelligence picks up on the vehicle based on the artificial intelligence, and then of course, activates the tracking. Okay, boom, go. Okay, so that was at 10 miles an hour, guys. Uh, as you saw, it was very tunnel vision. That is a very tunnel vision shot. But we see, we see the car, we know it's a car, we track the car. Right, 20 miles an hour. This was a bit more fun. There we go. Okay, so now that for me, as far as I'm concerned, given my in, uh, my industry experience, guys, I think that was quite impressive. We only got 16 meters from the camera lens to that particular area. And in this case here, even with its extreme tunnel vision, then of course it knew it was a car in a very short period of time. And then off it goes. Okay. This was, of course, obviously China. So, of course, we're now practicing out at the front here. So, of course, I'm just walking on the right hand side of Tyler. So, he's, he's perfectly safe. But this happened. You know, we didn't plan for this, but this happened. And it was, uh, it was perfect timing because I'm just standing here. He's coming down here. I've told him to go to the tree. A car is now coming. Tyler doesn't know to cross or go. So, of course, I've got the heads up from the actual driver. But watch the actual car eventually. It nearly blocks the complete field of view of Tyler stopping him. And of course, we can, it's only the head that was maintained. However, though, it kept the auto tracking working. So, of course, in this case here, we also incorporate PFA, predictive focus algorithm. That's whenever we auto track, we zoom and we adjust the iris at the same time. As you can see, we will zoom in maybe two, three, four times, but the picture will never go out of focus. Okay, so I think that was maybe the second one or so. You know, I think there's going to be another one come soon. And here's that car again. So it literally, it's just the actual head there. And then, of course, in this case, it still maintained the target objective. I know for a fact, and I know for a fact, guys, I've seen enough cameras that in a scenario like that, then, of course, that would have definitely lost the actual field of view and it would have lost the target objective. I know this definitely. Here comes one zoom in a second. There we go, zoom. Perfect picture quality, it never went out of focus. This is when we get Tyler to do some speed tests. Go on, Tyler, run. Okay, that, that was three zooms already. There's another one. I, told, I literally told him to run as fast as he could. Okay, so just count, count there with me, guys. I think there's like three or, three or four di different zooms there. And, of course, the pitch quality was perfect every single time. 
Okay. One, two. So two, two zoom retractions, no picture quality distortion at all. Perfect. This is the biggest one. So as Simon showed in a different video, is that uh, I have seen through different experiences, including on, our, on cameras, just, you know, like maybe two or three years ago, then of course, it, obviously, it was the target objective of, not. it wasn't even artificial de intelligence then, it was just, you know, video motion detection. But video motion detection in a close proximity with another video motion detection uh, field, field in the field of view, then of course, the problem was whenever the target was be, would be bigger. Now, unfortunately, Unfortunately, I'm a pretty big target. So in this case here, when if I'm actually walking adjacent to Tyler, then of course there's a high probability back in the older generations that of course obviously it'll pick up on me immediately and it'll start tracking me and it'll just completely forget Tyler. Well, in this case here, we did various different uh, obstacles. You know, walking uh, side by side is you know pretty, pretty easy, but you'll see from the first, first video you see, then of course I'm walking right next to Tyler. And then of course in this particular case, you know, Tyler turns back around, I continue walking, but I wasn't the target objective. So the auto tracking 2.0 will keep its eye set on the person that it follows first. And of course will keep you in the field of view until you in fact actually change the timer or change the PTZ field of view. Okay, so. Okay, so here we go. I'm walking right next to him and kept with him. Okay, there's a various ones, but there's maybe a seven or eight of these I'm, as you can see, I'm double the, double the size to Tyler. I've gone out, put a dower t-shirt on him now, so then that way we, in fact, actually match the same colors. Oh, I know that was close. That would have normally, in fact, actually got a, a different a type, of, different type of result many years ago. I know what, actually, because I've, I've completely blocked Tyler there. That one's a bit easy for a camera. Okay. But it really, were, really was that first one. I was walking right next to him. Oh, look, see? Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Okay, guys. Well, so I've had the technology for about a week or so. So I've got the auto tracking camera. I've got the TO camera. And of course, as far as I'm concerned, I, I wouldn't say otherwise. I think that they're absolutely game changers. So of course, uh, I will definitely be uh, installing one of these cameras uh, the moment that I get one. The moment that they go to 4K, so you got eight megapixels. Then of course, once again, then we're, we're just going on leaps and bounds as usual. And of course, obviously, it's always on an increase for quality of service, just like Simon said. Okay. Okay, guys, well, I'm going to close out the actual webinar here. So, of course, uh, thanks for everybody attending. Thanks for all of my uh, uh, previous visitors for the training course. Please follow me on the old LinkedIn, guys. Um, please send me your requests. And then, of course, I'll keep you up to date for product testing, tr uh, uh, troubleshooting, tr uh, uh, TMAC, you know, the thermal monitoring access control, body temperature, and then, then of course, obviously, TIOC. So, of course, in this case here, we've got the uh, three-in-one one camera. So, okay, guys, I think this has been a pretty good webinar and definitely successful. So. I would wish everybody a good afternoon. And of course, obviously, don't forget to keep safe. And then, of course, uh, I hope to see you in the close future. Okay, guys, this has been great. So all the best. Thanks very much.